Hey, what's up, you guys? The Curious Owl here, and today I will be reviewing Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. Arch Enemies is the second book in the Renegades trilogy by Marissa Meyer. This is a YA sci-fi-esque kind of story, and this is part of a reread series I have been doing because I never read the third book in this series, but I have read Renegades now three times and Arch Enemies now for the second time. I will say right off the bat, very similar to my feelings I have for Renegades, I did give this a five out of five stars. I really enjoyed my entire time with this and actually took a lot of time to go through and tab a lot of this book. I mean, you can see just how much I went through and annotated this thing. This, though, I feel like has a lot of things different in terms of the overall feeling the book gives in terms of the way that the plot develops and the way that the characters feel, but we'll get into that in just a minute. First off, I do want to mention that there are going to be spoilers regarding Renegades, as this is the sequel to that, so if you have not read Arch Enemies and or Renegades at this point, I would suggest that you do so because there are going to be some things, especially about Renegades, that will be spoiled in this video, since this is piggybacking fairly soon after the events of Renegade. Now I am going to read the synopsis that I had found on Goodreads because I think that this really gives the best idea of what the story is about because there's so many plot threads, there's so many things that happen in this that the synopsis truly gives the best of the best in terms of what Arch Enemies is about. Nova's double life is about to get a lot more complicated. As Insomnia, she's a full-fledged member of the Renegades, a syndicate of powerful and beloved superheroes. She works with Adrian's patrol unit to protect the weak and maintain order in Gatlin City. As Nightmare, she is an anarchist, a group of villains who are determined to destroy the Renegades. Nova wants vengeance against the so-called heroes who once failed her when she needed them most. But as Nova, her feelings for Adrian are deepening, despite the fact that he is the son of her sworn enemies and, unbeknownst to Nova, he has some dangerous secrets of his own. In the second installment of the Renegades trilogy, Nova, Adrian, and the rest of their crew, Ruby, Oscar, and Dana, are faced with escalating crime in Gatlin City, while covert weapons and conflicting missions have Nova and Adrian questioning not only their beliefs about justice, but also the feelings they have for each other. The line between good and evil has been blurred, but what's clear to them both is that too much power could mean the end of their city and the world as they know it. So like I said, the overall tone of this in terms of the way the plot is developed and the characters in a lot of ways is very different than what Renegades is. I did mention in my Wheel of D20 Reads video, as this was also counting for a Wheel of D20 prompt for the month of April, that the overall tone seems a lot darker compared to Renegades because Renegades was very much setting up the entire world and setting up a lot of the characters and their backstories and information that would then later pertain to things happening in Arch Enemies. Arch Enemies, though, because we've been established in this world already for an entire book, and we're starting to see some threads develop from the end of Renegades going into this, things are a little bit more dire, they're a little bit more complex, and you start to see those complexities, I think, develop more so here, which is pretty typical of a second book of any series, whether it's a trilogy or a longer series or even sometimes a duology, because basically the things that happen in the first book tend to have some kind of repercussions in the second book, and in the second book then can sometimes even further those complexities by adding things in, making things more intense and more complex as it is, and really it just causes this massive web and knot of things to kind of develop that I feel like really changes the way that the whole story feels and sounds as you're reading through it. Now with that being said, plot threads in terms of this are very similar. There are some things that are developed further that were discussed in book one, but there's a lot of things that in book one that really kind of wrapped up pretty quickly in Renegades, but some plot threads, including the idea of Adrian's search to find his mother's killer, are basically brought up in this, and also Nova's inability to figure out whose side she's really on get further developed here. We also learn of things that seem very minute in Renegades that are brought up and made much more apparent here in Arch Enemies, such as what exactly people are doing to Max, who is Adrian's adopted younger brother. What are the tests that have been they've been doing on him? That gets further explained here, and it actually brings up a massive plot thread. 
that plot thread is that basically in Renegades, it's revealed that the testing that's been done on Max has led to basically what is called Agent N. And it is essentially a serum that when injected into the body can completely obliterate any superhero power in any person that is a renegade or even an anarchist. The Council of the Renegades, or basically the people that are in charge of Gatlin City, bring this to the forefront to the renegades that are looking to patrol the city and control the chaos that there is as a means of a last resort kind of thing where if a villain or an anarchist definitely seems to get out of hand, they feel as a form of punishment, they should then have their powers ripped away from them. And that brings up an entire new idea of things in this world. Whether it's right to kind of in a sense play God and decide who keeps their powers and who doesn't, and there's almost kind of no right to a jury kind of thing. There's a lot of things that are brought up in that, especially on Nova's side, in terms of the hypocrisy that is brought up about the council and about the renegades in general. Now, I will still say that in this book, it is not at all a surprise that I still fall in love with Adrienne all over again. I feel like in this book, though, we really see so much more of that sensitive side that I grew to really love when I first read this series. Because in Renegades, we really got to see the very stoic nature, especially with him being the sentinel and really trying to prove himself and also find out information about his mother's killer while later on then seeing that he has feelings for Nova. In Arch Enemies, we really see that much more sensitive side play out and how he's really trying to gain her affection and really her attention. And I just feel like that Adrian is a, such a wholesome character. He is incredibly kind. And while he might not always do the right thing by others, he feels that he owes it to himself in a lot of ways to show up for himself and show up for the people he cares about. And I feel like that is one of the most endearing qualities about him and one of the reasons I fell in love with him so easily when I first read this series. And it still stands the test of time that on the second read, every single tab I have that is pink here is either a moment that he has where he is just absolutely adorable or are moments that basically just make me seem to love him even more or other characters in general even more. I have a lot of pink tabs, I'm going to say. So I think it's pretty safe to say that Adrian is like my number one book boyfriend of all time. Now, I will say that there is a point of contention I had with the Renegades that somebody actually left me a comment about saying that it's kind of an important thing that gets brought up more here in Arch Enemies, and I will agree with that comment. The comment basically was about Monarch, or Dana, who is one of our Renegades, one of the people that is on Adrian's team. In the review I did for Renegades, I discussed the idea that Dana didn't really have much of a point. There were some things that were kind of of maybe looked into in terms of what could be brought up here in Arch Enemies, but she was pretty much down and out for the majority of Renegades and didn't really seem to have much ground to stand on. Well, it becomes very apparent in Arch Enemies that she plays a much larger role in things, and I will say that I did kind of forget about how exactly that is, but I am happy to say that I do believe that it was much more apparent, and I think that this was kind of Marissa Meyer's point with Monarch, was to bring her in as kind of this very, very strong point of contention in terms of Nova's story. So it's pretty interesting to see how those little things really seem to start adding up the further you go on into a series. Another thing I really enjoyed about Adrian in terms of his perspective is this real internal battle of whether he really thinks that being the Sentinel is the right move for him. Very early on in the story, Adrian basically casts aside the Sentinel, making it appear as if that the Sentinel is dead because he, for one, has an issue with trying to hide the secret from not only his friends and Nova, but also his parents and the rest of the community that he has that respects him as Adrian. And there's this massive inner conflict we see throughout the entire book where it's this back and forth of trying to figure out what exactly is his identity. Does his identity lean more into Adrian of the past or does it fall more into the idea of the Sentinel that is really trying to find the best solution for all these problems that are coming up that he as Adrian can't necessarily solve but maybe as the Sentinel could. And again with the romance that is building between Nova and Adrian it really makes things a lot more complex not just for Adrian but for Nova because we see as Nova that she's having also a really hard time with her identity figuring out whether or not you know she can fully trust the renegades through people like Adrian who kind of give her a sense of hope but 
also having in the back of her mind that the renegades really failed her and they're not necessarily showing up to be the greatest people that you know everybody seems to make them out to be and so she's battling with the idea of whether or not being an anarchist is fully what she wants to be or if it's somewhere in the middle. There's a lot of talk in this series about this idea of gray morality and whether or not being fully one side or fully the other is actually any help to anyone. The one thing I will say that is in any form a negative aspect is that there are times where things are a little repetitive in terms of thoughts, feelings, things of that nature. Like for instance, Nova tends to repeat a lot about, you know, this idea of fighting with the identity. And it's basically just certain sentiments are repeated multiple times on Nova and Adrian's end since they are the two perspectives we have in this story. But honestly, for me, it's not too bad to where it distracts me from the book. I just know that it would be a bit of a point of contention with a lot of people in terms of why they wouldn't necessarily like this kind of writing. Because typically in YA, you have to really hit home with some ideas and this repetitive nature tends to come up a lot in YA because they're trying to really instill in you these questions, these things that, especially when it comes to morals and ethics, whether or not, you know, things should be the way they are, or if there should be things that are different, you know, it, it's kind of trying to really instill in you to get you as the reader to think about these things. And so it keeps getting brought up and brought up and brought up, which I know could be very annoying for a lot of people. But Obviously, like I said, having read this already, I was aware of that. And I'm not necessarily like bothered by it, but I just know thinking of how other readers would read it, that that would be a bit of an issue. So do go into it with that idea in mind. So like I said, this got a five out of five stars for me, but now we are going to move into my thoughts and the synopsis for the final book in this trilogy, Supernova. So here we have the synopsis from Goodreads of Supernova. The epic conclusion to Marissa Meyer's thrilling Renegades trilogy finds Nova and Adrian fighting to keep their identity secret. While the battle rages on between their alter egos and their allies, there is a darker threat shrouding Gatlin City. The Renegades' worst enemy is back among them, threatening to reclaim Gatlin City. Nova and Adrian must brave lies and betrayal to protect those they love. Their greatest fears are about to come to life, and unless they can bridge the divide between heroes and villains, they stand to lose everything, including each other. Intrigue and action will leave readers on edge until the final shocking secrets are revealed. So here are some questions I have in terms of what to expect with Supernova, because keep in mind, this is the book I have not read out of this trilogy. I've been putting it off for a long time because I had heard some people say that with this trilogy, it was for one, really, really sad. And based on the ending of Arch Enemies, where a character that you come to really love and appreciate gets harmed, it's very scary to read this book and, and hear that there's certain characters where things happen to them that are pretty devastating. And so it took me a long time to really get the guts to basically finally finish this trilogy because I also don't want it to end. I love this world. I love these characters. So this is going to be a little bit of a bittersweet ending for me. But my thoughts are is how exactly is it going to be revealed that Nova's an anarchist? Because there are some very close calls in Arch Enemies and in Renegades for the most part where Nova nearly becomes outed as an anarchist. And especially in Arch Enemies when like I said, a certain character gets harmed, it becomes very apparent that somebody is going to find out who she is. And like I said, Monarch plays a huge role in that because there is some suspicion that's brought up in Renegades and in Arch Enemies. And it's entirely possible that Monarch could, you know, out Nova if she understands that this is the same person, that Nova and Nightmare are the exact same person. Next is, will Nova ultimately turn on her own family? I feel like that this is not necessarily going to be a surprise if it happens, but I'm curious to see what would ultimately be the reason if she does end up turning on the anarchists. Does she ever? Does she ever actually move away from the anarchists and fight more for the renegades? And why is that? You know, what exactly is going to happen in terms of that? Especially if she's outed as an anarchist. Next is what are the consequences for both Adrian and Nova when their secrets are revealed, if they are at all? Because keeping in mind too, nobody knows still at this point in the story that Adrian was the sentinel except for a couple people. They find out very quickly like who it is, but everything's all fine. It's not like a huge deal. But there is a point in time where we have to look at this idea of what's going to happen to the both of them because the Sentinel is in a lot of ways 
looked at as a possible anarchist in the eyes of the renegades. He is not well liked in the renegades at all. They think he is a vigilante. They think that he is a bad guy. So what's going to happen to the both of them if the renegades find out who they are? And the very last question, and probably the most important one, am I going to cry at the end? It is very likely, it is very likely I will cry at the end or at multiple points because I will say by the end of Arch Enemies, I had some points where I was crying my eyes out because it was sad at some points. So I will not be surprised if I end up crying at the end of Supernova or multiple times throughout it. We'll have to see when it actually gets to that book. But those are all the thoughts I have for Supernova. I'm curious to see how the whole thing wraps up because like I said, I haven't read it as of yet. It's been kind of on that list of uh, need to finally finish this and stop being such a big freaking chicken about it all, truthfully. But thank you all so much for joining me in this review of Arch Enemies and a look at Supernova. Nova. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that button down below to subscribe to become an owl at Narflock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys!